Shockwaves erupted today as an unprecedented number of high-profile figures lined up to slam Justin Trudeau over his escalating abuses of power. TV presenter Dave Rubin ripped into Trudeau hard, tearing him a new one for his communist-style crackdown on the Freedom Convoy. The legendary Dr. Jordan Peterson unleashed fiery rage over Trudeau's authoritarian overreach. And even the normally chill parliamentary budget officer Eve Giroux exposed the nonsense behind Trudeau's economy-destroying carbon tax. This outpouring of different voices united against Trudeau's failed leadership marks a major turning point. The mask has slipped and his true despotic instincts got exposed. With so many raged against him, Trudeau can't hide behind his shrinking crew of liberals anymore. The political winds have decisively shifted as Canadians of all types rise up to resist his dangerous grab for power. Trudeau's house of cards is collapsing under the weight of his betrayals and his days as a prime minister are numbered. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we jump into today's video, take a second to sign up for our exclusive uncensored newsletter. The mainstream media won't report Trudeau's scandals and corruption, but our newsletter delivers the raw truth to your inbox daily. We'll leave you the link in the description box. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Political commentator Dave Rubin slams PM Trudeau as the worst sort of authoritarian leader and says Trudeau should be in jail for his authoritarian crackdown on the Freedom Convoy protesters. Who can honestly say Rubin is wrong about Trudeau at this point? The appalling actions of Justin Trudeau during the Freedom Convoy protests of 2022 show just how far the Liberal government will go to quash dissent. Trudeau invoked the never-before-used Emergencies Act to freeze bank accounts of protesters, a move that many legal experts have condemned as unconstitutional and authoritarian. He showed his true colors as a tyrannical leader drunk on power who has no regard for civil liberties or democratic principles. As Rubin correctly stated, Trudeau is a horrible communist who abused his authority and should be in jail for his egregious misconduct. Freezing bank accounts of citizens engaging in peaceful protest is the behavior of dictatorial regimes and not free Western democracies. Yet Trudeau seemed to relish this opportunity to punish his political opponents with impunity. Well, do you remember when Justin Trudeau, the horrible communist with the nice socks up in Canada, remember when he uh, became the worst sort of authoritarian leader? during COVID because a couple people, some truckers wanted to open up the country. And what did he do? He froze their bank accounts. After weeks of protests, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is taking drastic action to put an end to the Freedom Convoy protests. The time to go home is now. Trudeau invoking emergency powers, allowing the government to remove cars and trucks, suspend their insurance, and even freeze truckers' personal and corporate bank accounts. He says the powers will be limited in scope and that he's not calling in the military. The Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen and support law enforcement agencies at all levels across the country. They test you, and they see, and then they push you again. Guys, that was only two years ago. You think they're done with all that? And in retrospect, how ridiculous that people in masks behind him, he walks to the podium with the mask, takes off the mask to speak. That's when you're exerting uh, air and oxygen. Like, it's just so profoundly ridiculous. The man, he should be in jail. Like, if there was a, if there was a just society, which there isn't, he would be in jail. His justification of wanting to stop supposed mischief does not pass the smell test. The right to protest is fundamental in a democracy. Trudeau discarded this right because the truckers dared to criticize his COVID policies. He used the Emergencies Act as a sledgehammer to crack down on dissent instead of a scalpel to address any actual crimes taking place. This aligns with Jordan Pearson's warning that authoritarian governments will slowly push the limits to erode rights without people realizing it. In a recent interview, Peterson went off on his guests who tried to justify the authoritarian mandates imposed by the liberals. But the other obviously glaring possibility is that injecting billions of people with a vaccine that was not tested by any stretch of the imagination with the thoroughness that it should have before it was forced upon people also might be a contributing factor, partly because we know that it led to a rise in myocarditis among young men. And we also know that there was absolutely no reason whatsoever to ever recommend that that vaccine was delivered to young children so whose there, risk of death at COVID was so close to zero that it might as well have been not, zero. Well, that is so be, silly. Which was a, no. Do you know that our prime minister in Canada deprived Canadians of the right to travel for six months because the unvaccinated were going to transmit COVID with more likelihood than the, than the vaccinated? So this wasn't one bloody statement. Trudeau took advantage of fear around COVID to rapidly expand his powers. 
First, there were vaccine passports, then protest crackdowns, and lately a draconian pre-crime law that considers house arrest for people at risk of committing hate crimes in the future, all cheered on by liberals who value security over freedom. Trudeau clearly has totalitarian instincts that are incompatible with liberty. If he got away with freezing bank accounts, what other authoritarian tools would he use next against his critics? Trudeau didn't think twice about wrecking lives and careers just to get back at the truckers. Guys like Chris Barber had their hard-earned money frozen just for exercising their rights. And it wasn't just the protesters getting slammed, their families got caught in the crossfire too. Trudeau turned thousands of people into financial outcasts with one swipe of his pen. Trudeau's actions set a dangerous precedent that dissent can be crushed by weaponizing the state's powers against political opponents. It is clear that Trudeau is slowly turning us into a dictatorship. Trudeau's slow tearing down of freedoms is changing Canada into an authoritarian state right in front of us. His media buddies easily become propaganda puppets, giving cover for his power grabs. This shady collusion got exposed again right before the massive carbon tax hike. Some independent economists mysteriously put out a letter praising the carbon tax, giving Trudeau cover for his backroom deals with CTV to unleash pro-carbon tax propaganda. His sketchy deal between Trudeau's peeps and their media pals was timed to fake justification right before slamming Canadians with a massive new tax burden. Oldest trick in the liberal book rigs some expert report to push their garbage agenda that watch their media friends obediently plaster the news everywhere. Actual facts and real Canadian struggles don't matter. Does Trudeau think we're idiots who'll just swallow whatever slanted story he and his buddies cook up? Canadians see through this nonsense. We know this carbon tax ripoff isn't backed by real economics or care for the environment. It's just the latest way for an out-of-touch government drunk on power to rob hardworking taxpayers blind. Even the parliament budget officer Eve Giroux accidentally admits the truth. Trudeau's carbon tax has massive hidden costs for our economy. Though at first hyping up the rebates for households, Drew later admitted the tax of real impacts, like reduced economic activity and slower growth across industries. Parliamentary Budget Officer Yves Giroux, who joins me now. Sir, it's good to see you again. Thank you. It was a pleasure. So you, I'm sure, have been watching what's been happening in the House of Commons. The conclusions in your report, they're being cited by the Conservatives in particular as proof that Canadians are worse off because of carbon pricing, and that means this policy needs to go. Is that a fair representation of your findings? Well, it's a representation of our findings once you also include the economic impacts of introducing a carbon tax. So there's the fiscal impact on households paying the tax versus the amount of the rebate that households are receiving. But once you also include the economic impacts due to the introduction of a carbon tax, for example, the reduction in activity or the slower growth in economic activity in some sectors, then that's... That's the, that's the impact. That bureaucrat talk hides the real human effect, lost jobs, stalled investments, and insane costs for businesses and consumers alike. Trudeau's carbon tax ripoff isn't just hitting families hard on gas, heating, housing, and groceries. It's also inflicting some serious damage on Canada's economic health by lowering competitiveness, driving away investment, and killing jobs, stuff Trudeau and his PR team downplay or ignore completely. Giroud himself knows the carbon tax to true costs, even though he tried to hide it at first. But the truth prevails and regular Canadians feel the pain of Trudeau's economy-crushing carbon tax every day, in bigger bills, lost jobs, smaller paychecks, and less prosperity for our kids. No amount of slick spin can hide that harsh reality. Who really believes it's a coincidence these independent economists launched their letter just before Trudeau hits us with a massive carbon tax hike? This was a totally planned PR move to give cover for their tax grab. The media hiked it up as independent analysis while hiding studies showing the carbon tax damaging impacts. This dishonest stunt would be hilarious if it wasn't so bad for Canadians. While academics split hairs, real families struggle to heat their homes and buy groceries as insane inflation destroys their budgets. Yet Trudeau seems to love making life even harder with ever-increasing carbon taxes. His naive ivory tower theories blind him to the suffering on Main Street. The Liberals gave themselves emergency powers to jack up carbon taxes forever with no oversight. Families have no protection from Trudeau heartlessly taking more of their shrinking budgets to fund his green fantasies. His elitist disdain for Canadians shows as he robs us to pay for solar panels and windmills that only rich investors enjoy. Trudeau's total hypocrisy of exempting the biggest corporate polluters proves this has nothing to do with the environment. This is all about control and fumbling cash to special interests that keep liberals in power. His media pals dutifully play along, amplifying anything that pushes his agenda while ignoring skyrocketing energy prices crushing family budgets. 
The little guy's suffering never makes headlines like their staged pro-carbon tax PR nonsense. It's laughable when liberals accuse conservatives of politicizing the carbon tax, as if backroom dealings with media lapdogs to release biased letters isn't pure politicization. The hypocrisy would be stunning if we expected anything else from this government. Clearly, the truth is the first victim in their crusade for control. Canadians see through the false rhetoric. We pay the price for this tax ripoff every time the meter ticks higher at the pump, every time the gas bill arrives in the mail. No amount of slick propaganda or fake expert reports will make us ignore the hit to our wallets. Trudeau's fanboys try to confuse taxpayers by saying we get back more in rebates than we pay in carbon taxes. Do they think we're idiots? We see right through this shell game. The only reason rebates exist at all is to make up for higher costs from the carbon tax. Taking our money then giving some back ain't doing us a favor. The rebates also benefit city Canadians way more than rural Canadians who get slammed with higher carbon costs. Like all Trudeau's policies, this carbon tax scam targets specific groups like commuters and the resource industry while handing out goodies to favored peeps. It's a shady system rigged against hardworking Canadians who keep the economy going. Trudeau pretends the carbon tax is his gift to us all for saving the planet, but his arrogance is matched only by his hypocrisy. He gives free passes to the worst polluters that bankroll this party. His inner circle lives large, high-carbon lifestyles off the taxes they slap on working Canadians. This tax on everything is a world-class scam. As more people come out attacking disastrous Trudeau and demand change, he should realize that he is becoming the most unlovable, unpopular prime minister in Canada history. As more and more prominent figures speak out against Trudeau's disastrous policies and call for change, he should realize that he is becoming the most widely despised and unpopular prime minister in Canadian history. The growing crew of voices from across the political spectrum slamming his leadership failures suggests his support is collapsing. Well, that's all for now. How much more evidence do we need that Trudeau is drunk on power and unfit to lead this country? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.